Hey guys, what's up? Just making sure everything is working and uh, we'll get this thing rolling. It looks like we are good to go. So, welcome to the CCXRC YouTube channel, guys. Uh, I haven't done a lot of live videos in a while because I just haven't. <laughs> There's no good reason. I've been in a lot of other people's live videos. And so I decided that today, you know, I'd go ahead and just throw up a live video. I was going to be working on this anyway, and so I thought I could answer some questions. I know people have been asking me, uh, and I've been a little bit busy, and so my responses have been varied. So anyway, I just want to give you guys a chance to chime in in the comment section or the live chat while I work on this black market RC racehorse chassis. I finally got some shocks in for it. I ordered two sets this time. I had already ordered a set and I lost them. So somewhere around here, I'm going to have another set of SMT 10 shocks, hopefully. Hopefully they didn't get thrown away when I was out of town because I should have another set here somewhere. But I'm trying to get YouTube opening up here on my phone to get to the live chat since this does not yet show live chat for YouTube, which is a bummer. It's a great app, except for... That one big glaring problem that it has here. So I'm going to turn this on. We'll mute it. I don't see if anybody's in here. It's been a while, so maybe not. <laughs> oh, we got a few people in here already. Charles Quickhawk, BLX Matt, James Price. Hey, James, how's it going, man? It's been a while. Uh, Eddie Santabria, how's it going? <clears throat> so I've got a bunch of little things going on here. I've got... These AX3401, these are the heavy duty, be heavy duty bevel gear sets. And these are the overdrive ones. And I have these in the front and rear axle of this truck. I decided to also get them for the Max D that's sitting in the box here to be assembled, as well as the AX3708 lock transmission metal gear steel set. We're going to put in to the transmission. To beef that up a little bit and uh, that'll all go in the max D to toughen that up uh, that's one of the main upgrades I do in all those is uh, the gears they have to be upgraded so tanks just cool stopping by to say hi how's it going RC fun diversions uh, James Price I'm doing well I am excited about getting to this. We started tearing this down at a race, and I was going to try and stick shocks on it from something else, and it just turned out to be a bigger uh, pain than I wanted it to at the time. And so I now finally have shocks in, and we can get this thing up and running. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a go with the oil, the stock oil that's in these. Uh, just SMT 10 shocks. I will tell you guys... The reason why is because I got a set of four shocks for 20 bucks on eBay. And so I'm pretty much going to ride these all the way open here. And uh, not freeloaded at all. And see how they do. That's at least what the plan is. And we'll go ahead and get these installed. I have my mud truck here. I might get to working on that some as well. Put the wheel wideners on. I'm thinking this other set of shocks is going to go onto here because it needs some help. So we'll give that a go and see how it does with these shocks on there. But um, yeah, it's uh, the shocks that I stuck on here are just garbage. They were off of like uh, an old, what were they off of? They were off a, oh, a V-Car Bison. And so their they're decent shocks are just way too big for putting on here. And it was a mistake to even try. So uh, that said, I am going to get one of these trucks and just get a look at how it's mounted on there. See if I'm going to need anything. I've got a whole bunch of spacers and stuff on this because of the uh, this particular chassis needed them uh, with these particular shocks. So... Yeah, get a few on here and see how it looks. 
Tank is saying build, build, build. I got so many builds to get to. So, so many builds to get to right now, guys. And it's a good thing. The main one that I'm really looking forward to is the Tamiya Grand Hauler. I have that sitting down in the garage. I had the Fast Eddie bearings come in for that. And then I have... Uh, what else do I have coming? Oh, the multifunction control unit. I did end up ordering one of those. And that's going to make it much more realistic. And so I got talked into that by some buddies on the Tanks Talk, RC Talk that he did last night. Speaking of Tank, are you going to do yours tonight, the normal one, or did you just, just do the other one? I, I got on and there was nobody on, so I decided to just go live. So I'm guessing that you must have changed your your broadcast to the Wednesday night for this week. I'll wait for the delay. Yeah, right. Uh, is saying to sell him my... Axial Grave Digger, and my response to him is, yeah, right. <laughs> He's saying they're impossible to find right now. That they are, which is why it's so awesome that I was able to score one more Max D SMT-10 that I'm going to use for something or other. I don't know what yet. Maybe other. RC Funds Versions is asking when my first races we actually already had races um i missed the second race unfortunately i missed the second race because uh we're in the middle of a kitchen reno and i had a lot of work i had to do uh, around here at the house so i missed it Felix Matt says, just started posting some big Rock Bash videos. Check him out. He's working on his 100 subs. That's cool, man. Hopefully get there very soon. I remember getting that first 100 subs. It's such a cool, cool milestone to hit for sure. All right, that looks perfect with that spacer on it. So these uh, Black Magic Racehorse chassis, I actually kind of found because the guy asked me if I'd seen it on uh, the Salad Axle Monster Mayhem Facebook group, and I was traveling, so I had not seen it that he posted about it, and uh, so I thought I'd give it a try. I'm always one to try and see what is new in the monster truck game. I've been, I like the scale look of it. James Price says he's still up in the air about selling his. Well, if you're up in the air, you might wait to see if the uh, price goes up on him. I kind of question if Axial is going to release him again, but with a different body. I, I wonder. Wonder, wonder, wonder. It would be interesting to know. It seems like such a popular performer for them that I would think that they would re-release them just with a different non-licensed body. Um, Tank says not tonight. Charles Wendler says he loves that chassis, but lately looking at the ACRC Havoc chassis... I don't know that I've seen that one. Brian88YT is asking where I get all my parts uh, for my kits. It all depends. A lot of kits come with something. Um, like this was literally just the chassis and the braces. And then I think it gave you the spacers and that for your shocks. Yeah, spacers for the shocks. And I don't know what else. I think that was it. So, um, 
this is based off the SMT10 platform. So ideally what you do is just take an SMT10 off of the stock chassis and put it on here. I did not have one to commit to this build. In fact, I still need probably one more of these chassis realistically to do what I want to do, which is to also finish my SMT10 based custom chassis son of a digger, which is now just a frame again with the body on it. But uh, I ended up going and buying the axles for this off of eBay. It was expensive, but I know right away that regardless of whether it's out of the box or whatever, I need to upgrade the axles. They need the HD bevel gear set. Uh, I put uh, beef tubes in the axles as well, or the, um, uh, what's the other brand that makes them? It's not hot racing. I'll have to think about it. There's another brand that makes uh, some for this. And I can't, off the top of my head, think of who it is. I'll keep thinking as we talk. It's, uh, yeah, so it needs those tubes in it to stiffen the axles up and keep the plastic from breaking and then allowing them to bend. You can still bend your axles at the ends. Um, but yeah, so I, I basically know the parts I want. So this one I wanted the uh, to go a little more scale. So I am doing the shocks on axle. And so I actually want them to be a little bit softer shocks. Uh, and so I just went ahead and, and stuck with the axial shocks. I was going to get the pro lines, but you can't really buy new springs for their extra L, uh, XT ones or whatever their, uh, their long ones are for these SMT10s. And so you're kind of stuck with stiffer shocks. Um, at least from Proline. You might be able to, to mod something in there from a different shock company. But these, again, were cheap. 20 bucks for four. These are the SMT10 Axial shocks. And on eBay, if you look them up, they're around 20 bucks shipped. Extra speed, Charles Wendler said. That's who I have tried as well. Extra speed uh, makes a tube that goes inside your axle. Uh, and again, I, I can't really say much about it, uh, one being better than the other, because I haven't had any issue with either of them yet, which is good. I have, however, without them, busted several axles, and I had needle nose pliers somewhere. They're probably with those shocks that I lost. <laughs> Uh, somebody's saying, Brian's saying 19k subs already. Whoop, let's go. Yeah, man. This year got quite a few. Asking where I think I'll be by next year. Uh, maybe 21,000? I don't know. It all depends. Things change, um, throughout the year. Quickhawk's asking my favorite RC brand. I don't really have one. Um, I like lots of different brands. In lots of different cars. I really like what Arm is doing uh, with the bash scene. I will say that. I don't like what I'm doing with my needle nose pliers, <laughs> which I cannot find. It's crazy. Maybe I have another set in here. They were out here earlier. Here's another set. So, favorite brand. Yeah. I like sub brands, like I like Castle Motors, I know that. Um, I've had a lot of good luck with Castle Motors. Uh, from the beginning, I've talked about how much I like Venom batteries. Now I uh, am sponsored by Venom, so that's been pretty cool. It was my battery of choice before that, and so speaking about them and all of that, they reached out to me about my channel. And so they helped me with some uh, some batteries for some of the things that I'm doing for the channel, which has been nice. Um, I like J Concepts. I like what they're doing for monster trucks. I really like the tires that they're coming out with, and they're innovating. And yeah, I mean, I could go down the line. I've been very impressed with my low C vehicles that I've had. 
I haven't had bad luck with Traxxas. I love my Stampede, my original, my first truck, the Stampede Grave Digger. And I love my X-Max. You know, I could take or leave my E-Revo, but that's probably because I have the X-Max already. People in here saying... Max Paul says, love this chassis. Wish they were still available. Are they sold out? They still had a couple left last time I saw, which was a couple days ago. I think he still had two or three left out of the initial run. I wonder how many much interest he has to have in order to get another run going. That's the hard thing. Is It's a lot of work to do, and not a lot of money. It's really for the love of it. Two Boys RC asking where we're located. We're located uh, near Virginia Beach, Virginia in Chesapeake, Virginia. Known for our great dismal swamp that we have here. Such a wonderful thing. But we do, uh, in this region, we have No Limit RC Monster Truck Racing, which is great, fun. Which is really what got me back into this. I mean, I always liked the bashing side of the hobby, but they've really gotten me into the solid axle side of it. Charles Wendler saying as of like two, three days ago, he has two or three left. Yeah. So... You gotta reach out to them there. It's a nice looking chassis, that's for sure. Everything slapped in here real nice. Now again, I drove it with very stiff shocks on it. <laughs> very, very stiff shocks. And I still, I'll be honest, liked it. Um, it's gonna be a total game changer though, having a little bit softer shocks on here because it's really lightweight and so that's one thing i wonder is if i'm going to try and find ways to add some low weight to it maybe um come back a little bit we'll see we'll try that for now uh if i'm gonna try and add some weight on the bottom side just stick on weights we'll see but it's definitely lightweight, and so if the shocks, even these really soft shocks aren't doing it for it, I might have to think about other ways to make the shocks work for it. Quick Hawk saying he wants to upgrade to the Outcast. Yeah, I want to get, I've been really looking at the Notorious. Seriously. And then I seriously spent that money on <laughs> Grand Hauler. That's in my garage right now. I got the matte black edition. I'm super excited about it. Alright. This is a longer screw for some reason on it. a shorter one they're bottoming out on something it's hitting the light oh shots bottoming out there okay <laughs> that makes sense Oh, so what do I have on here? I'm running the Hot Racing uh, steering link up front with a Freestyle RC servo saver attached to it. And that has a spring on it to an EcoPower servo running a Castle 
Sidewinder 3 system in here that used to be in my son of a digger. Yeah, right, so he's trying to find a nice touring car. To me, it's got some cheap options, that's for sure. Hey, JD Passel, how's it going? James Price, No Limit, does have another race. Some more races coming. They just had one last weekend. That's the one that I missed. Which is a bummer because it's a point series now and I missed a point series race. Susu asks what I'm building. This is the Black Market RC racehorse chassis. And so I'm just trying to change out the shocks that I've already built it. So the um, sway bars are from Freestyle RC as well. I do like their products. The um, the lower links, the four links are from uh, Crawford Performance Engineering. And uh, that's where I also ordered my bevel gears and all that for the uh, the axles and that's where I ordered these ones as well as the uh, machine cut gears for the transmission and I also picked up some cool like uh, toy monster truck stuff from him as well he's got some cool stuff like the green light series with the Bigfoots which is awesome Max Paul, they are not freestyle axles. Tank, <laughs> Tank is installing stickers. Good luck, buddy. He's installing them on his uh, Tamiya, I think. Tamiya stickers on his Mirror Chrome MX-05. <laughs> I just finished that um, Bagaira build, and that thing was a sticker nightmare. I just gave up on it. I didn't put all of them in. There was too many. But yeah, so I'm going to get this quickly done. We'll throw some tires on it. See how it looks. See if the shocks seem to be a little bit better weighted for this chassis than the uh, previous ones I had on here. Yeah, right, saying he's wanting the Barbarian chassis. Yeah, man. Quick Hawk RC is asking when I think I'm going to finish the job. I thought I just saw somebody selling a Barbarian chassis. Maybe it was a complete, complete build. I know it's popular. I have the Terminator chassis, but it's a shortened wheelbase, so it doesn't really work well with it. I mean, it drives pretty awesome. I like how it handles, but the motors do hit the chassis. It's just too short of a wheelbase, so it's problematic. I'm leaving it like it right now because it fits the snake bite body to be that wheelbase, but it probably should be a shaft-driven truck for that body. There we go. That looks like it. Oh yeah, that's much better. I'd still like it though to sit lower. So, it's like I need Yeah, I'd like it to sit lower. I could move these up another hole. By me a little bit, but not much. Hmm. All that wrenching just to have to do it again stinks. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I kind of want every little inch I can get. I guess the other thing I could do is start with some limiting straps to kind of hold it. So it only goes back to a certain height. Bummer.
All right, I'm gonna move them in one little spot too, just to try and get whatever I can from these shocks. Might just need to get a little bit shorter shock in the end. Lots of tips here about putting things fuel line in the shock on the shock shaft to limit the distance it can go down. Sounds interesting. work it might have bought me just a little bit we're gonna just give it a go anyway here guys Doesn't hurt to just keep trying things out. I wish I had my electric screwdriver running though. <laughs> it doesn't actually have a two millimeter either, so kind of the bummer. This weird sizes, the Intigy set that I have has, it's like it's for Team Associated where it's got mixed standard and metric. So, I've got the tires on this are going to be these J-Concept Renegades that you see in front of you. So, I'm going to do this one as a Pro Mod. I'll run 3S. I might run the, the Son of a Digger body on here because probably what will happen is if I don't end up liking something about this, all these pieces are going to go onto that truck and rebuild it. That's kind of where it's at. And if I really love this truck... I might actually think about selling my son of a digger chassis. Thanks, Diesel. Says it's a sweet build. So yeah, so these shocks again, 20 bucks for four with all of the extra pieces and components for it. So, I, I just went ahead and bought two kits for whatever reason if I needed or I wanted to double up shocks or something cool. I would have that option. But again, my main thought was putting them on it. I want to get back to this mud truck. I don't want it to be competitive like I would do with my bog hog. But, um... I do want it to handle better. I'm going to go brushed with it instead of brushless because it just has too much power for what it is. And, uh, you know, I was getting through some mud pits with my crawler truck. So I'm just going to kind of go with that idea for this truck. And I'm going to use this motor system for something else. Plus it's got a nice hot racing gear set in it. That's sitting a lot more level. I like it already. Go ahead and throw some tires on and see what it looks like, all right? Give the, give the reveal. So I didn't finish saying I am running a hot racing transmission in here. I think I have, yeah, their gear, because I bought the whole completed kit, so I think it came with a metal spur gear as well. I think, I should know. Been a while since I started parting this thing together. So someone was asking about the parting and all that. So I do 
a lot of times do it over time just to keep the cost initial cost down um, and just slowly start building up the pieces that I need and then like taken from other trucks so I don't remember where oh yeah I stole these uh, these axles from one of the other trucks the um, Max D is where I stole it from and then because we I thought we weren't having a race because of the weather they decided to hold the race the next weekend which meant I had to then find some axles not axles uh, drive shafts for the Max D and so luckily Hobby Town where we were gonna race had some uh, MIPs which they actually had a pretty good deal on them so that's what I went with Oh yeah, so this, I think these are 12.3 inch wheelbase with these Crawford Performance links that I got. Again, been a little while since I ordered them. This project's been in the works for two months now, I think. I think I ordered it he reached out to me when I was in Cuba or Bahamas about getting one of these chassis. And then once I decided to order one, I started getting the pieces I need. One of the other things that I'll mention that I do, guys, is I do zip tie my bottom spring retainers for my shocks, especially because I run them so loose that when it expands, it goes beyond what the shocks spring length is. And so what I do is I, I put zip ties on the, the bottom of the spring and on the uh, spring retainer so that they stay together and I don't lose it. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Still not as low as far as ground cleaners is. I would like. I would like it to sit down here more. And that's because the shocks, instead of running at an angle to the trailing arms, are running straight up and down. And that gives it more height, I think. But there's also not a lot of travel there. It's also a Pro Mod, and I'm looking at a 2.2, so... Huh. Still not soft. But I think it's going to definitely need some weight. It's pretty light. Pretty light. So that's actually ready to run and give it a try. You know, battery will add a little bit of weight. Body's not going to add much of anything. Really, the test comes when it's out driving. So maybe later on today, I'm gonna strap a battery in there, see how it does. It feels pretty stiff still, though. Not much better than what these big springs on. So we'll see what I have to do there. Maybe some uh, nice light oil. I will say that these don't seem like it feels like there's a lot of air in the shocks. They don't seem like they're filled very well. And they don't seem very smooth. Something I also didn't look at is I'm pretty sure that there's two different weight springs. And I don't know that I matched them in my rush to get them on. Yeah, this is a thinner one here. And this is a thicker, stiffer one. see what I did here see if I got lucky looks like I got lucky <laughs> got the softer ones in the front and the thicker ones they've got a little piece of also um, there's a yellow piece on them that lets you know if you've got 
the matching. So these are red and these are yellow shops. So I didn't look at that, but I should have. Sometimes you just get lucky though. So what next? What next? What next? Maybe this guy. Just take a look at him here. Kind of curious what these shops would look like on here. What do you guys think? So we'll see my two reds. put these on they're gonna sit a whole lot higher these are too tall for this but that doesn't mean I can't work on this because I do want to think about a few things for this I have wheel wideners that's the first thing that I want to think about for this Let's put these shocks away and then we'll uh, We'll see what the stance difference is here. You see how narrow that is, which is what I wanted when I initially built it. Wanted that really tall, good old boy looking stance to it. Now we want to make a little bit better performance than it is and still hopefully have that good old boy performance to it. So these are RC four wheel drive tires on here. These are the tractor tires. I love these things. So, let's see what we get here. Let's see, let's show the back one. You kind of get it so it looks lined up for you there. Charles is saying that some guys from uh, Maryland want to come down. And, you know, I really wish I could have come up for that race. I just was not around when the uh, Virginia guys went up to Maryland. Wow, that really looked like it got tore up. So, I think these are 1.5, typically. All right, so, this thing, I should get some butter butter and just kind of layer it in here. Always use some other butter, especially since this is going in the mud. So we've got these little adapters here. I'll show you with this camera on here. There we go. I'll show you in a second what we got. So these are my wheel extenders. So what we're gonna do is put this onto the pin on the axle there. And then these long threads are gonna go right on through this and the wheel and hold it to the original stub. Let's see if we can't show here. So the other good thing about putting the um, udder butter on is that it's gonna keep that pin stuck in the axle like it is. A little bit of grease, always good. So you're just gonna slide this over the pin See how much extra length we're getting there? Otherwise, the wheel would sit back on this hex. So it's gonna now sit here. Let's see. This wheel is really worn out. It's gonna give it a lot more width. This takes an eight millimeter wrench. You could probably use some Loctite which I have, put 
some thread lock on here. Just going to run a little dab down inside of here. A little bit more than a dab. But dab would do me. really loose on there because this hex is really rounded out. I have to really tighten it down. There we go. So it doesn't look too crazy. It definitely sticks out further. But it's not too bad. Let's see if he's spinning around. For you guys here. I don't know if you can see the difference coming off this one sticking out a little bit further off of this. So it's a 25 millimeter offset. Let's go ahead and do the other one while I'm here. I think it's just gonna make it a little bit more stable. The problem is that the brushless power that I put in this it's just stupid. It's a Traxxas Valenian system uh, for like a slash and it just was way too much power. And it torque twists like crazy. And it's this custom chassis doesn't really have a great way for me to put. This one's all rounded out too. Oh, that one's not too bad. Anyway, it doesn't have a great way for me to put on stabilizers. So, it's just too much power. So I'm just gonna kick it back a little bit. Go brushed. You used all this power for something else. You get quite a bit of power from brushed anyway. Just won't have the wheel speed, which is what I was going for with this. But when we, I, I ran this at the uh, mud thing for uh, Digger's Dungeon last year at the uh, J Concepts Bog Hog uh, kind of event that they were doing with the No Limit Racing. And it was just, I couldn't even compete. It was just ridiculous because those trucks were, were made to just be super wide and this wasn't. So it was not even a fair fight. <laughs> I brought a knife to a gunfight. But... I got it dirty and that's all that, that mattered. That's what I wanted to do, get it in the mud. This was just, again, these shocks are just kind of bouncy. They look scale. That's kind of what I was going for with this at the time. Just a scale mud truck. And it definitely has that look. <laughs> it does not have performance at all. Bye, Sue Sue. Uh, someone's asking, do I have the slash 4x4? Four four? Yes, I do. I do have the slash 4x4 four four Platinum. And I was going to make it into a monster truck with a J Concept kit. But I'm having second thoughts. Definite reservations about that. Because it handles so well as a slash <laughs> that I don't know that I want to run it as something else. What truck is right next to my right shoulder? That's my out of this world. It's a um, honey dip by Honey Lulu body on a modified ground pounder that was my first solid axle I think and so it has freestyle RC braces on the bottom running a brushless system and uh, surprisingly of my pro mod trucks it's the cheapest I don't spend any time doing anything to it never repair it <laughs> 
and I do best with it somehow. I don't I don't know why I keep entering it. I don't actually want to do well with it. It just just keeps happening. It's just strange. Strange, strange. Alright, so we are winding this out. And we lost a screw on here. Why aren't these thread locked? Good night, Tank. So. I'm finding that some of these pieces are not together as they need to be, so I gotta put some thread lock on here. I'm actually missing one of these screws. Apparently it wasn't thread locked. I'm loving this Cow RC mat. In fact, I just ordered more. Because <laughs> I had to move this one up from the garage in order to work on some stuff the other night, which was kind of a pain the way I had it set up in the garage. And so now I'm gonna have one for the garage because when you drop a screw there, it gone. But, um, yeah. So I need a screw kit. Let's see, what do I need in here? These guys. Blue Loctite is my friend. Force RC Monster Truck Live. Yeah, man. So the last thing I gotta do here is put the other wheel widener on here, and this thing is ready to go. I'll come in at a later point and switch the motor. I don't know, I think I'm gonna just put an axial 27 turn in it. If there was more clearance inside the chassis, I'd probably do a dual motor like my SCX-10. What trucks I got back there. Definitely got an arsenal of monster trucks now. None of them perform awesome yet. I think it's because I'm spending too much time on too many. Someone's asking what the rim and tire is. This is a cheap rim. Tires are the Mud Basher tractor tires by RC Four Wheel Drive, and this one is not in the bead. Let's see if I can fix that real quick. These were given to me by RC Radio Patrol, Radio Control Patrol. He did some mud stuff with these first. And I could not get these anywhere, and so he said, hey, I got some, and I'll send them your way. And so, I am loving them. But I must have just overpowered this thing and taken them out. I think these might be Proline rims, but I don't know. JP Slayer Collects, J. P. Slayer Racing, thanks. Uh, says he likes my monster truck collection. It's growing. I'm loving the uh, the retro side of it these days. But I can only race two of them anyway, so I think uh, I won't be growing that or expanding that at this point. Which I was thinking about doing. Now we've got the bead in there. I'm just cinch it down. So I should give away my Armagran at 4x4 Mega. 
I don't have a granite 4x4 Mega. I reviewed somebody else's that he got for his kid for his birthday or for Christmas. He said I could do an unboxing of it, but I don't have that truck. I have the Army Granite, the BLX version, and I love it. One of my favorite bashers right now. Somebody's asking what my favorite Truggy is. Really haven't done much with Truggies. Um, so, I don't know. Ken says e Revo 2.0. Oh, Four Star C says getting the Traxxas funny car. Man, I so wanted one of those the other day when I was in the store. They didn't have any. I got something else. Got a drift car. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. And probably more practical around here. Whoa, that's... I'm getting ahead of myself here. I need to put the uh, wheel extender on before I go ahead putting that on. All right, this is the last one. Then we'll get to see what the stance looks like. Put the body on. Get a look. But yeah, these, um, as quickly as I'm trying to work right now, having this magnet mat underneath really does make a difference. Dropping things and not having them roll all over. JP Slayer, is this my <laughs> Valentine's date? Oh yeah, man. All right. I had to go to guitar practice for playing at my church this weekend. So my Valentine date was asleep already when I got home at like 9.30 from that. So I decided to just come up here. That looks better actually so I didn't want to initially widen the wheels but this actually looks more appropriate sweet 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 why the body's not sitting on here straight there it goes what do you guys think Kenneth Carter says thanks to uh, the video he's upgraded his ground pounder have yet to go brushless but running 15 tooth pretty cool 15 teeth not tooth what I'm actually thinking about doing here guys is I got a bunch of these um, I'm going to find another one first I guess this one so these new uh, Monster Jam 124 scale are so cool. They got the BKT logoing on the tires and everything. So I was thinking about making like a miniature sticker bomb doing it and doing a giveaway and stickering up one of these metal guys just for fun and uh, sending that out. I thought it'd be cool. I want to do it for myself, but before I sticker up this one, which is part of my little collection of these, Here's the uh, 35 year anniversary edition one. Like the Grandma Digger faded matte paint. So I got several of these. Um, but if I can find more of this new model, I'll probably be doing that just for fun. Somebody's asking, did I build the cage? I did not. A very very talented RC builder did and uh, he's over at Southern Builds and Customs Donald Jenkins is who built this he does a fantastic job highly recommend his builds his uh, SMT 10 chassis that he built me um, out of steel and powder coated blue it's so so cool so somebody's asking here, yeah, let's see, I'll show you guys again. So this is a mud truck cage. He 3D printed the motor, did the interior with the seats and everything. Yeah, I built little plates in here to hold my electronics. 
And uh, actually, funny story, this one, I ordered these metal STX-10 axles because I wanted the narrow axles at the time. And uh, the scale pumpkins in the middle and all that. Uh, this truck up here, this Jeep Mighty thing, I got that as a kind of parts truck for this because I needed some SCX-10 parts. And uh, RC Crawler Workbench, Nate was getting rid of that. And so I bought that off him for a good deal. And that's what the bottom plate of this is from. I had to use the front axle because this one was missing some parts when I got it. And I don't remember what else I needed. But ended up building that out of the parts after all was said and done. And uh, Jeremy took it and took it back to basically stock. This thing is looking awesome. Those uh, wheel wideners make this thing look so much cooler in person. Really happy I decided to go with those for it. I think it looks proper for a mud truck now. As far as the width. So, that's uh, number two. James Price, have I tried printing headers for the SMT-10? I have not. What's cool though is this one has headers on it. Little zoomy type things coming down. That's the new uh, Spin Master one. I haven't. Um, I should, or I should get some somewhere. Nobody gives away that file, and I'm not a good designer in 3D parts, so I have not, or did not, build that. All right, cool, so I've got some extra axle type pieces I need to get some things for. So this is ready to go back on a shelf. My shelves are kind of full. It'll go under the table, how's that? Need to get some bags for these parts. I got these from Michael McKenzie that still need an install. I think, I think they should go on this truck. The Max D. That's what I think. So, put this on and show you guys one. I've been waiting forever. I did not put them on here because what I used to do, and I think I'm done doing this, is this one body would come off and I could put on the... Uh... See, these shocks are just so much softer. Especially with the battery in the back here, it sits back. Um, actually... This has the Savox waterproof servo in it because this was going to be a mud truck. And I just swap it, waterproof system in it, put the bog hog body on, switch the tires, and it's a mud truck. Now they think I'm going to have a dedicated one. I just didn't want to be running these stickers through the mud. Basically, that's what I was trying to get to. Saying. <laughs> just took me a minute. So let's see. How are these going to mount here? That is not tapped. Oh, I see. I see, I see. Sometimes it takes me a minute, guys. <laughs> just, just a warning. Sometimes I'm a little slow on the uptake. So Chevy man, you're saying your friend can do the, the headers? That'd be awesome, man. I just haven't, you know, guys, this this hobby and YouTube and all that, it gets expensive. And so there's certain things I don't always do. Some people will dial out their trucks a little bit more. Uh, I try and keep a variety of things coming on. And so it just gets expensive trying to do every single little upgrade to these. So that's why I haven't done some of those things. It's just the cost is a little bit prohibitive. For something that's just like 
extra. You know what I mean? So that's that's why I haven't done that. I think they're cool. I think they're really cool. It's just uh, my budget and all the other stuff that I'm already trying to budget for to bring onto the channel makes it a little bit cost prohibitive. Because, you know, some of the things, you know, I get some of the review stuff for like the, you know, smaller, cheaper cars that I review just because I think people should know what they can do or can't do. Um, but all this stuff, you know, I'm paying for. So, how's that look? That looks nice, doesn't it? I knew you'd say so. <laughs> I knew you'd agree. Chevy man, do I have IG? I sure do. I'm all over the IG. Same thing, CCXRC. Somebody's asking about a Traxxas transmitter, an old one. Not sure which one. 50 or 70, 30? I usually just do 50. 50, 50. As far as the throttle pull on it. All right. Wish I'd have done this a while back. I keep saying there's this cool mud hole right outside our Home Depot because all the guys in their big trucks like to just take the tires off the uh, little driveway. We have a long little side drive going into the Home Depot out here in the country. And so they all like to drop their tires off and get in the mud. And so there's a really nice trench that they've dug that's really soupy muddy, especially if they're going through it when it's muddy out. And so I keep saying I'm going to bring my uh, bog hog over there, and I just haven't yet because I, I'd have to assemble it. That's why I want to have when it's always ready to go. So when it's raining and muddy, I just throw it outside and go to town. All right, so there we go. Sticker plates on there. You get the real effect though when the body's on, which I'm gonna now have three of these bodies. I need to go ahead and start replacing some of the uh, teeth on here because they come with replacement teeth. And I have one body that's never been run. Yeah, that just scales it out. I like it. Thank you, Ken, for the $5 super chat. That's awesome, man. Bull gear video, what's going on, man? All right, so I just got an alert. Chevy man wants to send me a message here on Instagram. Allow it. Allow it. These things get hidden in here. Somebody asking if somebody's going to buy Debbie's. I wish, man. I wish. Oh, so many messages. And if I haven't friended people back, which my Instagram feed gets so big sometimes as far as when I go in there how far I have to scroll to try and find out whatever the uh, the new alerts are that sometimes I don't get to uh, friend people back and so if I haven't friended people back then that means that the messages for whatever reason get buried and it's not always obvious anyway <laughs> you guys understand it's social media it's you're all well versed in how it works. 
but sometimes I definitely miss some stuff that I don't mean to miss, and I apologize, guys. All right. How's this? I can remember I got batteries in these. They're not plugged in, but I don't like them sitting on the shelf in the house, so later on I'll have to come in. Two of these guys have batteries in them. I can see them from the last monster truck race. So it's been in there for a while. Oops. All right, where'd that go? Where did you all go? Chevy man, I checked the IG. I uh, accepted your your uh, wh whatever your message. I'll have to go back and take a closer look at what you said in a minute after I'm done on here. I don't even know what time it is. Eleven. We've been going what hour, hour and a half, something like that. See a quick hug. <coughs> Social media, yeah, right. So he's never done social media in his life. I would argue that this is social media, but other than that, no, man, that's awesome for you uh, for keeping away from all of it. You know, part of it comes with doing it just because that's what people expect is you to be all over in all those different areas and arenas. It gets to be a bit much, honestly. So. Good on you for being able to stick away from some of it. All right, so that's clearing off a couple of the, my to-dos. I do have to tear apart these axles and install these guys. But do I want to do that right now? Gator RC is asking if I live in Chesapeake. I sure do, man. I live in the good old county, city, city of Chesapeake. That is also a county when you have to fill out papers. It's really odd. Anyway, guys, these wheel extenders are awesome. So if you have one of these trucks and you don't want to spend the money that I just spent on Sticker Bomb and you like the tires, like if you're doing a Max D, and you just want to use the orange tires that come with it. I think these are nine bucks is what I paid for them on Amazon primed eight ninety nine, and it'll extend these out. Give you so much more control. You won't be rolling over as much. And these tires themselves aren't that terrible. So I just don't want the orange rims. That's what it came down to for me. So yes, Gator RC, are you in Chesapeake as well? I think I got so much like cleanup stuff to do. So this guy, at least for now, I've got this old Northern Nightmare body I've been running on it. It's got Velcro. It sits right on there. So now I got another truck with kind of cool, cool cage under it. it. Does need something built up here for Velcro on the front. But it does for now. Well, unless you guys have some more questions, I don't really have anything else. I need to work on right now looking around just to make sure I'm correct about that I did fix that guy recently so I think most of the things that I have are fixed up see a quick hawk okay oh, RC you went to create bridge cool man yeah so we uh, we roam around here in Chesapeake a lot it's a great area. I'm really excited though, guys. I'll show this off. I did the video on it. 
I really like it. I realized though the other day that I neglected to actually glue the tires when we were finishing it up, but um, they stayed on while we were uh, running it in the yard, so that was pretty good. I'll probably just go through and put a bead on anyway, but out of the box, for what it is, so much fun. Love how it handles, love how it looks. Just a blast to drive. I, I had such a bad experience with my last on-road car that I didn't know what I was gonna think. This is friction shocks, whatever. It's not, not at all the performance vehicle that I paid a lot of money for in the uh, HPI Sport Flux 3 or whatever it was. And uh, this is only 165 bucks. Plus, you know, you have to put in a, a receiver and a servo. So I, I got a $40 servo for it. So about 200 bucks. Because I had a receiver. And um, so much fun. Absolute blast. And uh, I'm not going to do anything, any upgrades to it. I'm going to run it as a stock brush truck. Just like it is. Friction shocks. Stock tires were great out there. So that's... That's my plan with this is to just let it be exactly what it is and what they intended it to be because I think they designed it pretty well for what it is. So that's my thoughts on it. But it looks fantastic. I just love it. Wow, I really moved the comments here. JP Slayer is asking how he gets a CCXRC sticker. You just need to send me your address to Instagram Messenger or Facebook Messenger uh, at facebook.com slash ccxrc or instagram.com slash ccxrc. And I know that I owe one to Roger Chevelle as well, who asked me for one before I went on my last work trip to Panama and Guatemala. So... But yeah, these, I would love to just have a bunch of these and race them just, even oval, like just put out some cones and just go have fun in the, the uh, cul-de-sac. Ken, how's the V-Car Bison? The V-Car Bison needs a pin for the front right lower arm. I bent the little metal piece there and it popped out, so I lost it. And I think I have a set of pins, so I just need to fix it. That's all that's wrong with it. Big crash. <laughs> I have one other car. I have the, um, which one of those is it? The JLB 91101 or whatever it is, that I need a new dog bone for the rear left. I tore up the dog bone on a bad landing flipping of course so pretty cheap fix just need to get them ordered those are the two other things that are on my to-do list right now as far as fixes because I fixed up the bumper on my X max which was kind of a lingering just always let it go that thing's driving great put the new uh, drive shafts the metal ones into the e-revo that one's ready to go rock and roll zombies running great Everything else is pretty much up in working order again. So that's good. And uh, just a couple of little builds that I have uh, ahead. And hopefully starting up racing with the 5T again. I'm really excited about that. JP Slayer Racing is a monster big rig. I've thought about doing the, um, the bullhead. I think it is. To me, a bullhead. It's a clod buster. Yeah. To me, a bullhead. It's 405 bucks, though, <clears throat> for a kind of toyish looking semi clod buster. So we'll see. Not. I'd rather spend the 450 and get the grand hauler. Let's say that. Which I did. So that's what I, I have as my build coming. 
And then Axiomatic RC just talked me into the deal he found on the, um, what was it, the multi-function control unit. So I ordered one of those. Whew. Anyway, it's been a long day. Had a lot of work and we're also going through like house renovation stuff right now that's just extra because I work from home and so I'm always having to be down there and go through some of the stuff with the contractors and um, yeah, it's just a little bit of, of a nightmare washing all of our dishes in the kitchen sink and you know, it's first world problems, let's say that for sure. You know, a lot of real problems, I'm not going to complain. I'm just a little bit tired from the extra five things I'm doing at one time during a day right now. But anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, 11.10 p.m. Valentine's Day. I'm going to sign off here. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, for hanging out, watching me finish up the little chores that I have. Basically, is what they are. They're like remote control car chores. But sometimes with the channel, it kind of feels like that unfortunately uh but i do get out and try to just run stuff and not always be filming because uh i want to have that like fun of the hobby just doing it for the sake of doing it because i love it and so like that's with this the building this we just decided not to film it just to have fun doing it together my son was sick and so we just we just had fun building it the paint i took a few pictures and that's it and um it was a lot of fun the Grand Hauler we'll be doing some videos on. Not sure how we're going to do it exactly as far as the videos. But, whew, yeah, you can expect them coming, guys. And uh, I'm yawning. I'm getting boring. So <laughs> I will catch you guys later. I'll be on again here. The video's coming this week. Uh, we're going to be trying to turn out some more and uh, just keep the content rolling. So I've got a little drone that I want to do a video on, get it unboxed. Um, and... It's just another little micro. Having fun with those again. And uh, so little things coming, but it's uh, we're having fun just multiple ways with the hobby. And, and really, um, yeah, it just gets better and better as we get further and further. And I learn more because, I, honestly, five years ago, guys, I had no idea how to do anything with these. I was afraid when I broke a, a, a C-Hub carrier on, you know, one of them. And... You know, the fact that I could fix it, you can actually go buy parts and fix it was pretty sweet. So, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Have fun RCing. Catch you next time. Keep a controller in the hand, a wrench in the other. Get them working. Get them out and playing with them and have a blast, guys. Talk to you later.